My name is Dave Lee, and I am a certified wrestling geek and a bona fide smart. And I know wrestling. Do you want a wrestler who somehow was sent to 205 Live to simultaneously serve as both a demotion to him, but yet an upgrade to the Cruiserweight division? Do you want a wrestler who works as a great way to repurpose Zack Ryder wigs? And do you want a wrestler that proves that wrestling fans really don't want in-ring ability, as long as you could tell some jokes and do a couple of rhymes every now and again? Sloppy Jalopy! Well, then allow me to introduce to you my client for Dave Knows Wrestling's Honest Promos, the Certified Sleaze, the Bonafide Lug, the Dirty Jersey Road Dog, Eric Arndt, or Enzo Amore. Eric started his wrestling career only five short years ago. And it shows. As of late, WWE has a reputation for signing a lot of indie darlings rather than developing homegrown talent. And well, after churning out guys like Eric, you can see why they don't brag about it all that much. Because while he is a fan favorite mic worker, it seems that he really was just supposed to be Big Cass's manager, but no one remembered to tell him? As an example of how he's not supposed to be in the ring, remember that match he had against the Vaude Villains when he got concussed by a ring rope? See, even the ring itself is telling him to get out. Well, right before that injury happened, he was really trying to step up his in-ring game. Guess that'll learn him to try and wrestle. You can't teach that! However, in all fairness, it's pretty impressive that Eric is so good with his words, seeing that he allegedly never read a book in his life. Bada boom! Most illiterate guy in the room! But all that book learning's for sissies anyway. No book got him his position as linebacker for Division III NCAA football, now did it? Guess he's really not breaking down any of those dumb jock stereotypes now, is he? And that's no surprise, really. His whole act is just one big Jersey Shore-inspired stereotyping parody anyway. I mean, gaining popularity by having an East Coast accent and saying, How you doing? Joey Tribbiani might have to sue somebody. Oh, and speaking of encroaching on someone's turf, jumping out to Eric was the straw that broke the camel's back that got Neville to walk out on the company. And the man that Gravity forgot isn't the only person who doesn't like working with Eric. Roman Reigns got so mad at him that he kicked Eric out of the locker room. And supposedly, most of the locker room doesn't care for him either. It's odd, fans love him, but industry professionals hate him. He's the complete opposite of The Last Jedi. Smack Talker Skywalker! And unfortunately for Eric, this puts him in a very awkward position. Management hates him, but yet he's making too much money to justify firing him. Which means WWE will just do their time-honored tradition of shooting themselves in the foot by trying to sabotage their own gold mine. In closing, if you want a wrestler that is so over that the WWE can ruin him, no matter how hard they try, a guy that might single-handedly be the reason why wrestler court still exists, and a dude who looks like the love child of Vanilla Ice and Chester Cheetah, then allow me to spell it out for you: J-O-B-B-E-R, who's very lucky that he can talk his ass off, Eric Arndt, or Enzo Amore. So he says he's never read a book. Explains why he can't spell soft.